It's 2017. Four years ago in 2013, the hashtag Black Girls Are Magic, uh, designed by Kashan Thompson, was so popular that it became a movement. Black Girls Are Magic does not mean that black girls are mystical, black girls are not wizards or witches, and what it's designed to do is teach us us to celebrate the beauty and excellence and resilience of black girls. It's hard to imagine living in a community like ours where you don't see people who look like you, people who are succeeding, people in positions of power, but that's the current situation we find ourselves in. Now, we all come to TED events because the TED brand has become known for creating innovative and arguably the most significant conversations of our time. So I bet you're wondering why it is that I would use my TED platform to talk about a movement that I've already said is four years old. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm talking about black girl magic today because I live in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And like many communities with a majority white population, it's become important for us to celebrate more than ever, the capacity of black women. The time has come for us to stop saying in Oshkosh that we don't have the space or the demand for black leadership. We do. And if we don't do the work so that the black girls here are required to make their own magic, who will? So I'm committed to making things more successful for girls who look like me. I'm committed to tapping into their resilience. Now, while the, the, movement's, um, the movement's definition varies from state to state, from person to person, I believe a common narrative around this movement is that it's a celebration of the resistance and the resilience of black girls. And that resilience is our magic. But we're making the black girls here work, an awfully, work awfully hard to, uh, to be successful in our community. Let me tell you some uh, data. Last month in October, the, uh, Wisconsin was ranked as the city, the, the, the city in the nation with the most uh, gap in well-being between black students and white students. We're failing. And some would say that this um, failing grade is a result of other communities here that are more populated by black families, like Madison and Wisconsin. But local data would suggest that we too are deeply complicit. Here are some numbers that I'd like for you to consider. The Oshkosh Area School District has nine teachers who identify, or employees who identify as people of color. Only one of those people is a teacher. Winnebago County indicated that it has five employees that identify as people of color, two men and three females. The city of Oshkosh has one black employee. That is a civilian police officer. Now data showed us that black girls considered themselves leaders far much more than their white counterparts. In fact, they ranked at 78%, while white and Latino girls ranked at 68%. If the influences of, of uh, power here in Oshkosh are all white and all male, black girls here are making their own magic. What about the business sector? We thought about that. What role do they have to play? The Chamber of Commerce told me that they could not uh, identify any people of color that were members of the chamber. So we did our own research, and what we came to understand is that there are two black-owned businesses in Oshkosh, only one of which is run by a woman. What about the nonprofit sector? Let's take a look at that. There is one person of color owned nonprofit in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and only that one nonprofit is run by a woman. You're looking at her. So let's do the math. We have uh, three women at the city, at the county, one person at the police department, five women at the city, and one person, one woman, black woman, who runs a business in Oshkosh. So what that says to me is black girls here 
are creating their own magic. We know that nationally, eight out of 10 teachers are white. We also know from recent data that when black girls can see teachers and professionals that look like them, they're more inclined to do better in school, they feel like their teachers have better capacity to communicate with them, and data shows that they have an increased capacity to, to go on to college. We have one teacher. Some time ago, I had lunch with Ben Vogel. Ben is the superintendent of schools at the, at, at the Appleton School District. And during that lunch at which Ben and I were talking about student success, Ben said something I will never forget. Ben said, if they can see it, they can be it. So let's bring this, this message a little bit home, uh, because I thought a lot about that since the day I met with Ben. If they can see it, they can be it. And every time I think about it, I ask myself these questions. One, who is it that black girls in our community see? Two, how does who they see and who they don't see impact them? Three, what is it that I owe them as a black woman in this community? And four, what is it that we all owe them to ensure that they can be successful here? I say we all own this situation. Now the answers to number one and three, I think about often and they're very day dependent. Some days the answers are different. But the answer to number four, what is it that they, uh, who is it that they see that impacts who they can be, is simple. Not that the problem is simple, it's very multifaceted and it cannot be uh, taken away or explained away very simply. We didn't get here because our path was simple, we're certainly not going to be able to change our path very simply. But I believe a piece of it is representation. We owe it to them to give them role models that they can tangibly see so they know who they can tangibly be. Tangibly be. Now, I grew up in, Osh in Chicago, uh, Illinois. I grew up on Chicago South Side and I attended Diet Middle School. There, all of my teachers were black. And we had lots of representation. We had a black mayor, we had black elected officials, we had black business owners, we had black doctors. For me, I had never thought about that I would have a time in my life when I would be able to take access to black success for granted, not until I moved to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I can remember like it was yesterday, my teacher, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor was a tall, dark, mocha-skinned, eloquent, gray-haired math teacher. And I can clearly remember, like it was yesterday, sitting in Mr. Taylor's classroom and saying to myself, I'm going to be a teacher someday, just like Mr. Taylor. Now, my life took another path, but Mr. Taylor's very presence in that space afforded me an opportunity to imagine myself as a teacher. Couldn't we do that here? We certainly could. And I think it's really important that we start to think about how that could happen for us. Let's talk more about opportunities here in Oshkosh. Oftentimes when I'm in meetings, people will say to me, I'm really excited to become a more anti-racist, uh, inviting and welcoming space. And I'm always like, I'm really excited about that. How do you plan to do it? And most people will say, I have no idea. So that begs the question, in my mind anyway, are we really serious about getting that done? Because we can't say that we want to go someplace, but we haven't created a, a map of success to ensure that we get there. Now, I'm not a believer in starting from scratch. We have some best practices in place. The University of Wisconsin Oshkosh has done a great job of bringing black professional women to their space. That's certainly someone that all of us should be talking to should be looking at as a model. It's critically important. It's critically important to us because I believe that the success of black girls is the success of all girls, and therefore lends to the success of our community at large. Let's think through the roles that we could all play. Because I don't consider myself the world's best speaker. I'm here today on the TED stage because I wanted to be a representation for black girls. 
But I know that in a largely white community, I can't be everywhere at all times. So I'm going to ask you to join me in thinking about what you could do from your respective places of influence to ensure that we make the change necessary to, to generate success for the black girls in our community. So here's what I'll ask you. When you're in places and spaces where you work and play, be that voice where I can't be. Ask those tough questions. Consider how you could open up space for different verse, uh, voices, specifically for black women in leadership positions. When you guys came in this morning, I was looking around and I didn't see anybody that I could visually identify as a woman of color. I'm the only woman in this space. So let's think about what that looks like. The Oshkosh Area School District told me that they have 200 some odd black girls in their space. That doesn't include biracial girls or girls who identify as more than one race. So there's approximately two or 300 of you and there's me. How much impact could I likely have? I can't touch everybody. As friendly as everyone looked and as much as I wanted to say hello to everyone, I don't have the capacity to do that. So it's unreasonable to think that me and approximately 15 or 16 other black women in the community can do this work by ourselves. We've got to do this together. Will you join me? Will you think about that? Now, I'm excited to think about the community that Oshkosh can become. I'm really excited and hopeful that as the nation is browning, the 2020, the 2020 Census Bureau predicts that we're going to have more people who identify as black and brown. What do we do about that? We can't have a reaction to that. We have to be proactive around that. And let me tell you what that means for people sitting in these seats. It means a couple of things. One, people you love are going to partner with someone who identifies as a person of color. It doesn't mean that they're going to marry. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to procreate. But because there are going to be fewer people who are white to identify with, it's going to become necessary for us to increase our racial literacy. Two, the people you work with, the people you live next to, are going to look darker. Three, the people who work for you are also going to be dark-skinned people. So the way in which we've done things historically isn't going to work. We've really got to put our feet to the fire. We've really got to participate in color brave conversations like this one in order for us to get to a place where we really are the inclusive and welcoming community that we care to be. I don't come here today with answers because if this was really simple, you know, if it was like a flu shot, we'd all be cured, right? But what I'd ask you to do is do this. Think about what I've shared with you today. Think about the role you could play Tap into your resources and be that person that asks the challenging questions about diversity in your space. Read books, watch films, come to events that will help you to understand the impact that this change in our nation's demographic is going to mean for us here in Oshkosh. And I'm going to ask everyone in this space to think about how you can make that change in your own spaces of influence. It's challenging. Gosh, if it was easy, we'd all be doing it already. It's really hard work, but I'm going to ask you to stay out in front of it and be the voices in the spaces so that our black girls can be successful here. Because again, their success is the total sum of our success. And we all need to have skin in the game to make sure that we become a place that people respect, honor, and look at as progressive. Millennials have said that they want to live in places that they perceive as diverse. And we, when we ask them what that means, they say places that are intentionally diverse and have policies and practices that lend themselves to that, to that idea. Are we that city? I don't know that we are today, but I'm hopeful that with your help, we can be. Thank you.